All right, we uh, we live. I think. All right, let's go. Setting up. <clears throat> I don't know what episode we on. <laughs> Stop counting. All right, um, we live though. What number show is this, bro? What number is this? Like fourteen. No, I can tell you real quick. Hold on. Hold on. Give me a sec. Um, what up? One. What up? One, two, three. Hello, everyone. Greetings and salutations. This is number 17. 17? Oh, man. 17. Dang, I didn't even give us enough credit. <laughs> I didn't even know we've been going this long, bro. It's wild. I think, let's see. Um, it's wild, man. <laughs> yep, number, number 17, young Reed. That was 17, dog. We um, We're still doing it. We yeah, yeah, I mean... You ever just kind of like you have this moment you're like should should we just should we just stop or should we just keep doing it you know what I'm saying <laughs> I don't really think no nah, I haven't I haven't had a moment where I felt like we should stop I do feel like man I got so much going on I wish I could do more you know what I'm saying and really lock in and focus on just doing this you know a little bit more and Dion stay with us stay with us y'all fix it Dion up. Dion down 17 times for sure yeah, y'all, um, y'all stay with us. Um, we're yeah. not gonna be here for an hour and a half. You know, we're just gonna be <laughs> getting out. Um, right. Because <clears throat> Reed wants to watch the finals and whatnot. But um, yeah, man, late uh, show. Oh man. Um. So yeah, it's uh, like you said, man. Just been busy trying to get together to do this and just just have our friendly conversation. Uh oh. You know, just to keep just to keep each other level, so to speak. Why you say right. uh oh? I had a little lag right there. That's all. We good. We good. Okay. We um, you know, everyone was talking about the debate. We're gonna get to the debate at the we end. We gonna get okay? to it. We gonna get. That's to gonna it, be man. at the end. So just stay with us. But <laughs> first, we're gonna uh, we're gonna talk a little sports, a little music, a uh, quick quick bit about the NFL. Um, I have to give a shout out to a local Mississippi kid. He's thirty six now. Um. Steven Gostowski for the Tennessee Titans has kicked not one, not two, but all three game-winning field goals for the Titans. And, you know, that coach, um, what he was with at the Patriots. Vrabel, Vrabel. Yes. Yeah. Now, most people, most kickers in the league, you know this, if you miss an extra point and three field goals in a game, you're cut the next day. But yeah. Vrabel – he knows Gostowski. You know, Gostowski, uh, he, he, he was drafted by Belichick. Uh, he, only, he only missed one year a couple years ago due to injury. Wasn't the same last year. They, they let him go. But um, in the first game of the season, he missed an extra point and three field goals. He yeah, went from, I know. He went from the fifth most accurate kicker in the NFL to the eighth in one game. Trey. But he you know made what the, the he made the one that counted, Young Reed. You know what the he spread the, was. You lost. You know, money you, you know what the spread was on that game. I'm not gonna confirm okay. or deny. Okay. But the spread was two and a half points. We're talking about the I, very first game. Yeah, it was two and a half points. Titans over Broncos. Mm -hmm. He missed three field goals and an extra, and extra point. point, and they had a touchdown, an easy touchdown. Uh, on the last play right before that, that could have won the game by more than six. I mean, by more than three. Mm. But they won by two, Trey. So I just, it's, you know what I'm saying? I ain't saying that it's fixed or nothing. I'm not saying that it is. But I also am not saying that it wasn't either. I was just, it was just like, wow, really? Steven Gostowski, the fifth most accurate kicker. In history. In history. The That's fifth almost most. as... That's almost as good as Brett Bear being the most accurate college football kicker in history, right? Is he? Shout out to Brett Bear. He's got Brett Bear's got to be top five. Got to be at least top ten for sure. He ain't miss a lot. Um, but 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 for Gostowski to miss those 
in that game. It was it crazy just, though. Unbelievable, bro. Well, but they, it, goes but they won by to, two. it goes back to new team, new holder. The holds could have been bad. The snaps could have been bad. We don't know. People just blame the kicker. That's but true. The point I'm trying to make is <laughs> he made the one that counted. Because right. had he made every kick up until then and missed the game winner. He ain't even need it. Oh, then he would be the, the, the you see what I'm saying? his fault. Yeah, for sure. Right. Just like the second game of the season, game winning field goal after he had missed extra point. Mm-hmm. Third, third game of the season, game winning field goal. He scored 32 points. The next highest total is the tight end for their team. I forget his name scored. Like Johnu Smith. So Johnu Smith. He playing really good right anyway, now. Anyway, so anyway, that's my little NFL spiel. I, All just right, my gotta, I gotta, I gotta talk about my Raiders, man. We uh. You know, I ain't really rub it in the Saints fans on the show. Yes, you did. You know, I did. Dude, I gloated. You, you, not on the show, but you. Really yeah, no, no, no. All right. That's what I'm saying. Hold up. Time out. I, did, I didn't gloat on Chestnut Checkers, though. So. Hold on, Chris. Hold on, Chris. Chris. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, so I did my live thing, but that was not a Chestnut Checkers affiliated uh, live. But So I, I did my thing. And, you know, the Saints lost again. But mm. so did the Raiders. And, you know, I got a few texts, few phone calls, people laughing at me. They got their jokes off. The kids in school, <laughs> I've been, I haven't like wearing my Raiders jersey around campus, like little kids who ride, who catch the bus the same one in the morning was like making fun of me too. So ah, Coach Reed. it's, it's honestly, bro, it's just fun to, to even start a conversation, whether people trolling me or not, or I'm trolling right. them. It's just cool to, to uh, open up a conversation about something we got in common. And that's a love for the game sure. of football. Sure. So hopefully we have another good week. So many injuries in the league. I think that's probably the biggest standout right now, you know, yes. and, and then like coaches getting fined for not wearing masks is another thing. So that's, you know, we can't, we, we could be talking all day about that, but you yeah. know, it's weird that the different restrictions they put on, on people for well, a football game and, and the ones that they don't put on. So it's just well, an interesting I'm, situation. You, you're talking about the mask. So Mississippi kid, I'm a Mississippi state fan. We put it on LSU, man. It was crazy. No one expected that. Dude said like, SC, they kept they kept putting the ticker up like, so-and-so uh, has just broke Dak Prescott's record, Mississippi State record, SEC record, national record. Like he just broke record after record. And the game was still- about, uh, Colin Hill? No, man. The, Mississippi the quarterback? State quarter. Oh, what's his yeah. name? Um, I forgot already. Well, Shout out to State, though, bro. I always kind of, you know, because of you and everybody else who was, you know, my, my time in Mississippi, like, made me pay a lot closer attention to Mississippi State football. And we had some transfers like Birch and Aries, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, so, you know, I got love for the for, for State. I even had a uh, – I went to a clinic with Coach Jackie Sherrill uh, for some special teams work when uh, back in the day. So he, he gave me some – you know, I learned a lot from Coach Cheryl and from in, in that short time. So uh shout out to State, congrats to them. Obviously, LSU, that was a magical season that that you know that's a once in a lifetime thing that we saw. That we, it was a it, it was a treat to watch right. that. And for it to happen, you know, here in my homes in my hometown, you know, it, it was a, uh, you know, it changed history forever for football here. So um, you know, we to expect those kids. To go out there and 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 bring the same thing that was ha- that from last year is really not fair. But also, they could have played better, you know. Yeah. And coach and coach could have coached better. And they just gonna have to go back and make the adjustments because they lost all those players. They lost their coordinators, Aranda and Brady. You know, mm-hmm. Insming is still there, but Brady gone, who was the passing game attack dude. And they got Bo Pelini, and it, I don't think he made the right adjustments the other night. So, yeah, yeah. it's you know. Not having the full crowd at Death Valley helps. And KJ Costello, that's his name, KJ Costello. Costello, right, right, right. He uh, you know, he's, a, he's yeah, he's a transfer from um from from Stanford. And and there's I just keep hearing a lot of people, not you in particular, but just you know, they didn't have the stadium, they didn't have the players, the coordinators, all this. And I'm thinking to myself, like, Mike Leach didn't have an offseason or preseason. He mm-hmm. this is a brand new team, right? All new staff. You know what I mean? Brand new quarterback. And right. Mississippi State doesn't have half the athletes and five four-star recruits that LSU does, mm-hmm. period. That's fact. So, you know, and look, nobody at the end of the season in the LSU locker room 
is going to go, we lost, but – or no one in Mississippi State locker room is going to go, we won, but you either won or you lost. And at Thanks. the end of the season, that's on your record. You know what I mean? So, mm-hmm. anyway, it's just – it's really weird college football, man. It's kind of like the 1950s. You got conferences playing seven games, some playing ten, some are doing their own thing. It's, <laughs> you know, right. you know how people used to claim themselves national champions – you know, yep. I mean, shoot, even going back to the 80s, 90s, you know, I remember mm-hmm. Auburn went thir- 13 and 0 and was number two behind somebody USC. else who was 13 and 0. It was yeah, it was just, and that was crap. That was crap. But it's just, you know, at least at least they're still going to have the playoff. And uh, it'll, it'll be interesting to, to see what plays out. Yeah. But y'all slow your brakes on Mississippi State. Credit it's to them, though. Still got, Good game. They've still got, yeah, they've still got nine more games and, um, Alabama yeah. gonna tat tat tat. <laughs> Alabama I mean, uh, about to return to glory. I'm pretty sure that's what my expectation is. So, so um, sm- smart money is on Bama right now. Yeah, and and talking about the mask, Mike Leach, the coach from Mississippi State, didn't wear a mask the whole game. Had it right did here. He get a, did he get a fine? No fine. Even after the game, it's so weird because like he's over here, the reporters six feet over here with a mask on and he's talking he's talking into a mic and they're way over here yeah that's what they've been doing for the uh, nba games and this was crazy you can't even get in the nba bubble like you got to get tested to get in there right Mm -hmm. i'm pretty sure so the reporters are still like they still social distancing even though they in the bubble where it's, it's quarantine and it's everybody's weird, supposed to be clear you know even like it's weird mark jackson and mark jackson stupid. and um van gundy got like this wall in between them while they like reporting dude it's stupid you see the the <laughs> all the broadcasting booths you got one guy's over here one guy's here one guy's way over here and they're all talking to each other it's like dude, you know what i'm saying guys get it together like i mean we know that when y'all leave this booth, y'all are sitting down in the dinner table together. Soon as the cameras or, go or, off, or next dog. to each other they on like. the plane, like that's the. <laughs> so that's that's what I'm that's what I'm always saying about like people are in a war with reality sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, bro. what are we doing, but, man? Believe you Listen, me. But let me get off. I'm I'm finna hit us. Yeah, cover. chill out, chill out. Yeah, yeah. let's all keep right, but, let's um, keep it moving. All right, how? So uh, let me, let me check real quick um Malcolm's former oof Malcolm's Lakers are losing 23 to 12 with 451 to go in the first quarter okay it's a long game bro did it's a you long know game. I saw one of the realest things I saw today somebody said Jimmy Butler did what LeBron couldn't do <laughs> at Miami go to Miami and take a team with no talent around him to the finals and I'm going wait 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 they still had good players. Butler's got like here. No one, no one expected Hero to be as as phenomenal as he was. You know, as he has been. He's a rookie coming out of Kentucky like that. You know what I'm saying? Because Balling. no one's, but no one. He didn't get to play the rest Balling. of his senior year. You know, he wasn't on display in March Madness, so nobody saw him. Mm-hmm. March Madness got canceled. So as soon as the season got canceled, he was he was in the gym getting better getting ready you know what i mean um andre andre iguodala he was a quality player has won rings like there's a lot of there's a lot of experience on that heat team other than just jimmy butler no question no question and they They got got a and they got a coach and they got a coaching staff who's been together has won finals and i I saw something too they did that neither team made the playoffs last year which is which is crazy Right. Yeah, man. So, you know, I just think uh, <laughs> uh, Jay on here, he said the reporters even wearing masks during the interview make no sense. And they six feet apart, sense. but whatever. But anyway, yeah. So, you know, the Lakers have won like six championships that I like in my lifetime that I like actually watched my first NBA finals ever when I was like four years old. And I became a Lakers fan when Magic Johnson was balling out. And then, like, the Kobe days, Kobe Shaq, you know, and then Kobe and Powell. So, like, you know, seeing the Lakers in the finals is, like, I get excited, but it ain't even the same, you know, this time around. Because you got it's the bubble. 
I've been like an anti-LeBron guy forever. So I got mixed emotions about all the bandwagon fans joining, you know, screaming Lake Show. Like you used to hate on us so bad. And now you screaming Lake Show, like just say you're a LeBron fan, dog. Don't try to claim the Lakers because that's a temporary thing. This has been like a lifetime thing for me. So I'm excited about being back in the finals, obviously, you know, regardless of who on the team, I don't care. You know, I if the Lakers drafted LeBron, I'd be LeBron crazy, I'm sure. But I think that since Kobe died, like I just put it just went in my head, like we're gonna win it for Kobe. They're gonna win it for Kobe, man. And I ain't saying it's like some kind of conspiracy sacrifice thing. It is. I, it, I, is. <laughs> it, it feels like it kind of is, though, to be honest, man. But uh no, I don't the know. Le- the levels of that, I'm not. I don't do my homework on it, so I can't really speak. But I'm just happy that my team is in it, and hopefully we get the dub, and I can just, you know, we'll be tied with the Celtics for 17 championships, even though this one is kind of like asterisk, you know what I'm saying? Like the 99, but but you still got to count it. But again, you either have winners or losers. You know what I mean? At the end of it, you're still going to say we won. Right. We lost. No doubt. And we got 17 and the Celtics you know got I mean? 17. And next year we're getting 18 and we'll have the most championships out of any NBA franchise. So I got to be honest, two nights ago, I think it was two nights ago, maybe three, the uh, game six of the Celtics heat, mm-hmm. I, actually, I actually watched pretty much the entire game. Mm-hmm. And it was uh, it was crazy because, you know, you forget sometimes that how like incredibly athletic these guys are, and you know I start looking up certain guys and you know people people say all the time you don't realize how tall they are until you go to a game live, Ooh, like the, like like the shorter like the shortest guys on the court that you, that look like midgets are like six feet tall. Yeah. Which is or like six is, three, <laughs> yeah, or, yeah. You know, it's just like you know um, it's crazy. But it's and and the game has evolved so much because if you were seven foot, you were a center. Period. Period. And then and then you started having almost seven footers running point, and now you see a seven foot guy dribbling up the court. It's it doesn't it doesn't seem odd at all. Now if you shack. Mm-hmm. And weigh three bills, that's different. You know what I mean? <laughs> a little bit different, but yeah. There, there's not many guys that are built like Shaq and Barkley, you know, these days. Just like you don't really see many power forwards, you know what I mean? It's just it's just run and go, man. It is mm-hmm. run and go. Running, Literally. yeah. I mean, it's just back and forth, running and going. So um it's like the video game, bro. Like it when really I used is. to be when I used to be playing live and I could remember like maybe 05. It, I used to play with the Sacramento Kings when I wasn't playing with the Lakers. And I would put in Mike Bibby, Bobby Jackson, Catino Mobley. This is my one, two, and three. None of these guys mm-hmm. are taller than 6'5. And I put Paige Stoyakovich at power forward and Chris Webber at center. And Paige, like, hold on. They, well, Paige Stoyakovich. Was Sacramento? Yeah. Paige, Sacramento Kings? Yeah, that's the Kings okay. who I was playing with when he was like MVP candidate. So, okay. uh, you know, I was playing like a small ball style of ball on on live with with shooters everywhere on the court. You know, no big man. Chris Webber, 6'10", 6'9", not really a center, but, you know, just just down there as a big man. But he could step out and shoot it, too. And, you know, like, and now that I'm not what I'm seeing and what Steph Curry really did to change the game. That's where it is. And you see a lot of people like I don't watch basketball no more. Or they complain about it, man. I think that that's uh. You know, I don't – if you appreciate the game, you appreciate the game. No, and, and things are going to evolve. Football has evolved. Baseball has evolved. Everything evolves. Nothing, nothing well, stays hold on, hold on. at the same time. I don't know if baseball has evolved a whole lot. Those dudes. Not as much. Oof. Not as much. They're not on roids. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Okay, but, okay. I see what you're saying evolve. Yes. I thought you meant like the – just the, the But style. they hit – I think it was last year or the year before that they hit more home runs than had, had ever been hit. You know what I'm well, saying? Well, that's because the Astros and everybody was cheating. That's just one team, dog. That's just one team. They was cheating for sure, and they got caught. But they spanking the Twins right now, so 
you know. Yeah. But anyway, as far as basketball goes, I think people are doing who who used to watch it back in the eighties and nineties and not watching anymore. I think you're doing a disservice to yourself because the game has moved forward in a way that people are more skilled and more athletic, and maybe they don't play as hard or it ain't as intense physically as it used to be. It's a, it's a lot more finesse to the game, but that doesn't mean that the art of basketball still isn't like being, you know, exhibited on the highest of levels by, by these guys who are really, really putting a lot into their craft. So, you know, I just want to shout out the NBA and, and wait, I'm ready for these Lakers to, to hoist this trophy up. Cause I'm going to go, I'm going to go live and talk noise again. So I guess, you know, with baseball doing such a short and see, they're doing like best of three playoff series. I freaking love that. Yeah. I wish that basketball would go to like a best of five. You know what I mean? They, that's what they used to do. I know, I know, but it became about money. And I feel like baseball going seven, you know, the game seven, there's always that. Dude, hockey just, hockey was doing best of five. You know, I think they did best of five. Then nobody watched the hockey finals a couple <laughs> nights ago. Shout Man. out to Tampa Bay Lightning, though. They, that's who won. I do know that, at least. Yeah. Stanley Cup champs. But, um, but still, it's just, uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, like I said, you know, I'm, interest, I'm, I'm interested to see what's going to happen with the NBA next year when there's no messages on the back of jerseys and Black Lives Matter and written on the court. And see, like, that's, bro, look, at the end of the day, some people are turned off by that. They are. I, they are. It's like I don't even notice it on the court when I'm watching the game, though. I don't care. I, I noticed. You know I noticed the jerseys. I was reading all the different. Yeah, um, that's the one. The that's like after you watch it once, then that's like irrelevant afterwards. You know what I'm saying? Like once you, I mean, you're really just focusing on the game itself, but none but of that we, matters. Shouldn't we take this and run with it in, in all sports? Imagine if every player got to put some sort of phrase or wording like if I had a jersey and with my like name XFL. on it and it said butts or no no, no I just mean like <laughs> like um something like kill them with kindness you know ah yeah yeah or something like uh make love now war or something yeah. like you know you know what I'm saying just like little or like a bible verse you little know what monstrous. I mean yeah yeah just like so when people see it they go ah okay and it's just almost people always talk about conditioning the with conditioning people with what they see on tv mm -hmm. why not take that to to promote good positive things that is black lives matter is a good positive thing too trey no 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 no. i'm just i'm talking you're saying like added to different different stuff other than just like no, because I'm some people that. some people put let me say this some people put like education reform and some people put like i've seen some, that i saw that some other saw things that. education other reform. Than, other than just Black Lives Matter, which is uh, right. which is okay, and but see, Black Lives Matter, the phrase gets twisted into the organization, and then you got a whole argument about rioting and all this vibe. <laughs> I don't want to get into that. I really don't. When I when I think of, I, we said this on the show before. Hold on, think, hold on, Chris, 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 hold on. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> so I ain't trying to get into all that, man. But uh, I do I do feel what you're saying. Like if there were more positive messages. On, on the backs of jerseys or uh, all the fronts of jerseys or just scattered all throughout um throughout sports the field. in general yeah you know i think that that probably would be a good thing for people or like build people billboards on, you know what i mean it's just like um because like i said the black lives matter thing is not going to be on the on the court next year and the season's going to end in in a, in a in a couple weeks and then yeah. those messages won't be there but all i'm saying is when, when I see something like education reform on the back of a dude's jersey, I'm going, okay, yeah. I mean, of course I believe that, but how, how is that phrase even having any impact on someone? Like, you know, to, some, someone's going to go, you know what, education reform, you know what, that's, that's a good idea. Let's, <laughs> but, uh, the average Joe doesn't have the capability to necessarily invoke change in that area. You know, it, it, mm -hmm. it almost it, it's almost a sense of like, you know, with all the riots and whatnot, like, man, I wish people would riot the shit out of some stuff for some educational reform. You know what I right, mean? Right, right, right. Like, damn, I wish they would just like <laughs> awesome, I, awesome health care, man. Yeah. Like 
I'll tell you what, or some, you know, decriminalization of some things, you know what I right, mean? Like, right, right. let's, let's, you know, peaceful, but, you know, in numbers. Peace, you can't have a peaceful ride. You got to make a decision, Trey. All right. Well, you know what? Let's ride about some education <laughs> stuff. All right. Let's do it. Let's um, get this. I think it's worth it. I think it's a, a worthy cause for uh, not to just, not for like random acts of violence against innocent people, but to, to for a by any means necessary approach to education reform. You know what I'm saying? Like what means do we, or, or what means are we are necessary for us to achieve this goal? Then mm-hmm. there, there are no limits. Whatever is necessary for us to do it, then it must be done. There is no like, okay, well, we can't do that. No, the line isn't drawn until the change is made. And that's what that's what the phrase is by any means necessary by Malcolm X meant, as he said it, though people twisted and said he's violent, even though that's not what he meant. But anyway, uh, I think it's well, time for us to go ahead and uh, get to the meat and potatoes of this thing, bro. Yeah, I was going, I was going to say something real quick. Did you notice the NBA's theme song? I've been trying to tell you about Big Sean for about a month now. Mm-mm. The da-na, NBA shows. No, 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 The playoff song. Which one is it? Big Sean and Lil Wayne. That's get into the paper like it's human nature. I need to go back and listen to that. Now I'm gonna tell you what song on Lil Sean. I've been, I've been bumped. Big Sean. I said Lil Sean. Yeah. Big Sean. But with this though, hit one with him and Post Malone. Uh, Wolves. Wolves. Oh, that's my jam. I that's added my... that to our, I added that to our soccer team playlist. Yeah, that one. Yeah, so those kids dope. are like, that's "What is one. this?" And then they hear, and then they hear uh, Post Malone like, "Oh, that's Post Malone." You know. They um, know Post Malone, but they don't know Big Sean. Right. That's right. sad. That's the problem with a lot of, um, let me, what is that? Uh, NBA that, young boy got arrested in Baton Rouge yesterday. By the way, that song is called Don Life with Lil Wayne. Don okay. Life. Don Life. I did hear that song. I just don't remember it. Well, I it's, don't remember the tune. You can't afford to miss a layup when you're in the playoffs. That's, anyway. I've just been on that Nas, bro. I ain't even going to front. I know, like, I know, that I know. mug hard, bro. And yeah, I ain't I really got time to listen to music like talking about anyway anymore, except like in my off period. Oh well, I can tell you that. Um, so I was we, we we were we were working out today, you know, in soccer, just warming up, and I was taking requests. Okay, I normally don't let kids pick the music because they have it's really bad, really yeah, bad, really bad. So one of the kids recommended "Capitalize Off Pain." You ever heard it? Nope. Heard of it? Nope. Neither neither have I. "Capitalize Off Pain." It just came out. It's got like Send me that. just. Just ca- no, you don't want to hear. It. Um, it just came out like a week ago. I don't know. Um, you know, it's got a million views, or whatever. But the guy sounds like he has a deviated septum. At first, I was uh, like, oh. I was like, is this one of those chipmunk albums? You know what I mean? A devi- you know, they're just they're devi- really nas- They're really nasally. They're really nasally. You know what I'm talking about now? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, he snore just, probably. They're just really nasally rappers, is what I'm saying. So they talk like this, or they like, no, no, no. I ain't like this right here. All right, do they rap so like I'm, this, or are they like, is it like this, like Biggie? You know what I'm saying? No, no, no. I'm gonna. Uh, so uh, now I'm have to, now I'm have to play it for you. Are you oh, ready? No, no, just, man. Just listen. Okay. Oh no! Stop! Stop! Time out. I hate the sound already. Listen. That's young boy, ain't it? That ain't young boy. If that ain't big, his name is Big Stunt. If turn it off. It's off. If that ain't. Do you hear what I'm saying? That though? dude wanna be like NBA young boy so bad. That's that's almost as bad as how how much Rod Wade <sighs> stopped Kevin Gates. Like, bro, you gotta. Soldier Slim said, first thing, be original, because if you get your own style, people feel you more." He ain't said like that, but you know, he said in his Soldier Slim Uptown Third Ward Magnolia accent. But be original, man. Be yourself. Can't nobody <sighs> be you. 
Nobody built well, like you. Remind yourself, nobody built like you. You, you designed yourself. That's a well, bar. And I, I, it is a bar. I think that a lot of people get, what a lot of people get confused as well. It's not just the rapping. It's the producers. The producers just be copying every other sampled song. You know what I mean? Yes. And it's like, you can't tell one producer apart from another these days. You know, like you could hear, you could like hear it when same song, the same sequence of bars and flows and, and choppy. And, you know, like, um, you could hear a, uh, and that's no what the offense kids to, like, bro. As it is what the kids like. It's just something to shake your head to, you know what I mean? But <clears throat> that's like, um, like Dre would pianos and violins in the background, you know, um, you could just, you could tell, you could tell like that's a Dre beat right there. You know what I mean? Right. right, uh, right. Even when M was doing, when was doing beats for a while, he, he had his distinct sound. It he wasn't, did. it was, it was very different. Um, he produced Renegade, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, he, yeah, produced, yeah, he, he produced Carried Across for Nas, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like he produced the, like majority of the eight mile songs, you know, 50 cent, uh, mm -hmm. Get Rich or Die Trying album. Um, he like M M, M had, had a little streak. He where did. He like he did. went in on on the producing and he did a great job. So I'm a, I'm a well, fan of his production and his even, own stuff, on, especially on and, encore. And and Kanye too. He's got Kanye. He he's known for like sampling. You know what I mean? Right. And doing a lot of old songs. But man, today producers just they're not original. You know, not it's, at all. But um, the rap is even less original. You ready? Speaking, of original <laughs> the debate last night i watched the whole thing man i fell asleep to be honest i see you got that shirt on man <laughs> you, you trolling so, hey i just want everybody in the audience to know that we are real americans <laughs> so i got this shirt maybe like five six years ago hey what's what's on the front of your head this, this is my <laughs> no the front oh okay that's a red sox i was just making sure man what did I you think know, i didn't know if you had the maga on there bro I know, <laughs> you got, I know you got it in the closet somewhere <laughs> um you know what honestly i've never even seen one of those hats for sale in mississippi or or i like I, people I've, i think people I've, have to order them I haven't been anywhere where I've seen those hats for sale. I've never well, even seen one if, in Mississippi. If they, put them in Wal if they put them in Walmart, like liberals will go and like destroy them or like buy them all and, and like burn them on, burn on, on them. camera because that's what they would do. And then they probably would. And, and then the conservatives would just buy them all anyway. So that's probably why. So as soon as they hit the rack, they gone, bro. They hot, they hot commodities one way or the that's other. That's probably right. Um, yeah, the debate was uh fir first off it was it was you know everyone was saying the same thing you know what I mean like they're arguing and they're not letting each other finish and this and that and and you know I just want everyone to just stop for a second yes these these guys are debating okay they can talk all they want about Trump and Biden but the moderator that's his job is to take command. And sometimes right. Trump, sometimes Trump was bullying him, but the moderator was, you know, you're, you're, you're supposed to be in control. Right. And, and, and we talked about this. I said something during the thing. I was like, listen, have a cutoff switch, click when it's their time to speak, click when their time is up. Man. You know what I mean? That's very simple. It's very simple. Free. I that was agree. the first thing that everyone was on social media talking about. You know, they're not letting each other finish. And it was tough to watch. But after the moderator finally sort of took control, mm -hmm. it was it was somewhat interesting to listen and watch. But I'm going to be honest, man. Like, I hope the next two debates, and I'm, I'm really interested in seeing that Mike Pence, uh, Camila Harris, uh, Me too. vice Me presidential too. debate. I'm but like, I, I want to see that. The things that they talked about fracking, I don't, I don't care about fracking. Reed, <laughs> you care about fracking? You yeah. think that ninety percent of Americans know what fracking is? 
I learned what fracking was from Sarah Palin. You shouldn't have to Google fracking if you're watching a debate to figure out what it is our presidents are talking about. You know, they was like, that was the drill, baby, drill. I mean, they was talking about it back then. But it was, it was a, it's the same exact topics every four years, bro. Dude, I, I was old enough to remember when Al Gore first started talking about Me global too, warming. me too. And listen, can we just stop, though, with global warming? I mean... You don't think global warming real, bro? It don't it ain't it don't feel hotter to you than it used to when we was younger? In the summertime? <sighs> For real? Come on, spend a summer down here then in Louisiana. And then, then just... holler at me. <laughs> I'm telling you, bro, I, I believe that that is true. But you know why though? To be honest, Trey, to be honest. Okay. Every however many years it takes the earth changes the climate actually changes mm -hmm. ice age second ice age like that happens so climate change is real like it literally already has taken place and is a scientifically proven fact as far as i know so to deny that it exists is like like going against there was no ice age apparently i guess then right you know what i'm no, saying no i'm not denying so I, I think that we 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 are you be putting pollutants in the air and using all these chemicals and fossil fuels and all that so you know like think about the oil spill a couple of years back that pumped all that oil into the gulf of mexico we don't even know what the long term effects of that is going to be you know what I'm saying? So how, the climate. How long ago was that? Should, that was like like eight years. One thing you don't see you don't see any BPs no more around no, here. They all sure don't. Down. They don't. But no, no, no. I, and listen, I just we call it global warming. Listen, I am a huge Planet Earth fan. I've seen every Planet Earth documentary that David Attenborough, I believe that's his name. Don't know the British guy. I've seen every Planet Earth documentary that there is on Netflix and Amazon mm -hmm. Prime. Me too. They, oh and yeah, those 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 are really good, for sure. You know the Brit, the British guy. He's talking. The British guy. He's talking. Yeah, yeah. He's really soft. I'll fall asleep to it. But um, <laughs> no, no, no. And and he and 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 they go all over the world. They, the one of the last ones they did was um, uh, the seven seven continents. Mm -hmm. Seven. It was called Seven Worlds, One Planet. Yeah. And it talks about how each continent and the climate change that's happening on each continent with with the wildfires, yeah. um, you know, with um, certain ice caps that are melting. Yeah. Um, there's literally polar bears. OK, this is one I saw. Polar bears are now hunting like out like beluga whales in the ocean. Mm -hmm. They're going out swimming out and standing on like little ice icebergs and diving and killing like whales and pulling them back to shore. Yeah. Like that's not normal. You know what I'm saying? That's not normal. Like if you look at certain- It's things, melting. Right. <laughs> Cause but, it's hot. But I don't know if, you know, they talk about it in America, but like that's, that's a worldwide issue no question no question so, so, but so i don't think it should be at the forefront of a presidential election when all we can can do do is control from california to florida you know what i'm saying like i just don't feel like that that here, here, here's the deal though trey i i agree with you on that level you know that it shouldn't be like our main you know one of the top policies but it is a policy it's, it's, and it's, it's like you said they always talk about it every four voters, years bro it's for voters because you know they got the tree huggers out here no offense you know that's just what you know i use that term i use that term because that's what people call them you know people who are environmentally active environmental right. activists people who are you know trying to support the environment and it is a global issue and since we are the leaders of the, the president of the, the united states is called the leader of the free world, and we take on the responsibility of all the other countries, it automatically becomes a topic for voters. So they have to discuss it so they can be like, this is what I think about it. This is, you should vote for me because if I get elected, this is what I'm gonna do about the environment. Mm -hmm. Every topic that they discuss is all about voters. 
everything that Trump says or doesn't say is about what the voters are going to think if he says it or doesn't say it. Same thing for Biden. No, so you're right. It's not really a it's 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 a dog and pony show, man. And it's embarrassing, honestly, that two adults can't have a conversation without like talking over each other. Yeah. It, remind, it reminded me of being in class. I'm gonna let you I'm, 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 I'm gonna let you go after this. It reminded me of being in class and like having that one student that won't shut up. You know what I'm saying? And then there's another student that wants to like answer the questions the correct way, but he can't ignore that other student that won't shut up, that don't know what he's talking about. That was Joe Biden and Donald Trump yesterday. Two students in the class that don't know how to act, and one of them really is just being rude. You know what I'm saying? The other one don't have enough class to handle his rudeness. Yeah, and like, and you know, people have been like killing both of them for how they acted in the debate, and I'm it's going, childish. But it's like, I get it, but I mean, isn't that what Americans watch on TV every day? Go go look at any every go day. look at any Fox, CNN, <laughs> le left wing, right wing, ESPN, uh, Fox Sports, CNB. It's a it's a bunch of people dressed in suits debating and arguing their point to the point to where even. ESPN shows I can't watch sometimes because they're just yelling over each other and yep. yelling and yelling. And it's like end, Stephen A. Smith and Skip Bayless. Yeah, but but here's the difference. They're talking about sports, you know, and and Donald Trump and, and Biden are talking about things that are supposed to be relating to all of us Americans. It's like I know I did think that, you know, you're talking about um you know, certain things they said because they don't want to lose votes. Um, you know, Trump is full support of, uh, you know, law enforcement. And, um, you know, he, he's kept calling Joe Biden out, like, you know, you won't yeah. say you this. Law and order. Right. Yeah. Just like, you know, he was saying democratic cities or the crime is bad. and, and Democratic this, governance over and over again. Oh yeah. my God. Now look, in Mississippi, we have a Republican governor, right? Mm -hmm who's caught a lot of flack for, you know, this whole COVID mandates and whatnot, but we have a democratic mayor of Jackson. Mm -hmm. Reed, the last time we spoke, I think we were in the mid eighties. We just hit like 90, number 97 homicide in Jackson today. Let me ask you this. That's horrible. First of all, that's awful. Do you think if there was a Republican mayor, there would be less murders? In Jackson? Do you think that that got anything to do with the, the, the political party of the mayor has anything to do with homicides in Jackson? Um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think that has anything to do with it. Totally for, unrelated. For our Jackson situation. Totally I, unrelated. And, no, the, the point I'm trying to make is that I think Trump was, was saying things like he's, he's offering help to like the cities like in Portland but he was saying because it's a democratic, I guess, governor or the city that they were in, whatever, that they didn't want his help, if that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They like, didn't want no federal uh, involvement in the- Right, because maybe, maybe it would seem like that if they came in and made things better than certain people, and, and that's what we got into last time, talking about the democratic and Republican titles that people you, you wish that, that we could just vote for the man and not for the, the party, you know what I mean? Because the party, like, we, we, we posed the question, does this debate even really matter? I mean, think about how many few percentage of people, <laughs> how many few percentages of people are watching the debate going, I don't know who I'm going to vote for, and this debate's going to settle it. Right. How many, I mean, really? Bro, you want you want to know? Can I explain? Go so, ahead. I'm gonna finish, no, I want to on answer. social <laughs> on social media, all I saw on social media was Biden supporters dogging Trump, Trump supporters dogging Biden the whole time. The whole time. It was like, what are we doing <laughs> this for? Why? And then and then you got like the 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 Libertarian Party, you know, who's stuck in the middle. It almost makes you wish that certain libertarians had a, a stronger voice than they do you know what i mean man bro anybody dog trey 
they could get me and you up there and do and have and, and have a more intellectual conversation. And we ain't had nothing to do with government our whole lives. But if you, you ask us some questions, we could come up with it. We can at least come up with some ideas, not talk over each other, and at least be respectful and, and not try be up there lying and you know, calling each other, name calling, bro. Like, bro. Wait, you know what? Max, Max and Malachi you know can get up and have a more interesting conversation. You know what? You just gave me a good idea. Read, read and butts 2028. <laughs> okay. <Let's go. laughs> okay. How old do you got to be to be president? 35. 30. We good. Read. You be the. We good, man. You could be like the second coming, you know, of, you'd be the second black president ever. I'll be the first real all the way 100 percent actually i'm not actually actually according to ancestral dna i'm 20 percent white though so I'll i'm be half, like i'm the, half italian i'll be so. like the blackest president because obama like was 50 so at least i got 80 percent according to ancestry mm. you know what i'm saying listen read I'm hella I would, european I, though i would be your vp and you know we could probably get a nice following if we we started you know making waves now we got eight years to get us together. 2028, you ready? <laughs> All right, look. <sighs> Bro, let me say a couple more things about this, what I watched last night or what. Because right. I eventually, I, I, I only watched it so we could talk about it at the show and I wouldn't like not know what I was talking about. I also fell asleep. <laughs> I also fell asleep on it because you know, as I was like, you know, we was texting during it and I'm like, bro, I cannot believe I'm actually watching this. Like, this is mm -hmm. brutal. I would rather not be. I'd rather just be wrestling with my kids, honestly, because it's, I'm getting nothing from it. You know what I'm saying? Like, And I'm see, not, I, I didn't get anything from it neither, man. I feel like that. I don't think anyone did. I think one thing that everybody can agree on, you know, on either side, like I, I've seen more of like, this is horrible on either way. You know, I'm usually like, you know, everybody pick. There are those who are on each other's side and they bashing, you know, the other party. But majority of people like, honestly, this was crap. Either way. I didn't, I didn't like the two minutes and talk. I feel like that, first off, I feel like debate should be a, a situation where, you know, I don't know if the moderator comes up with the questions, but I would love to be a moderator and ask questions to people that are in this upper echelon society of America with this type of tax problems or financial problems. Mm -hmm. And I, I wanna speak for all the people down here and I wanna ask them questions about, you know, how do we, how, how do we fix things from education standpoint why are so many kids suffering or um you know why are so many people dying and why why have 100 people died in jackson mississippi and it's not even october yet you know what i mean like mm -hmm. things that are real to the people and again reed we we've talked about this plenty of times on the show and i've said it i'm a firm believer of it that if more people would invest in their local politics then you would see more of a change than waiting around for a president to 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 make Man, big decisions or, or or a mayor either, either like so i think local elections definitely have a bigger you know have more weight to your uh personal to affect you personally you know what i'm saying like voting on different taxes for schools and things like that like you can actually like in ascension parish we voted on a tax for right know, Right, school, you know, and, and it passed. Right. So a new school is gonna be get built. All the uh, the football teams are gonna be getting turf. You know what I'm saying? Fields at the high schools. Uh, in East Baton Rouge voted on a um tax um a couple years ago that passed. The new school get built. McKinley gonna get renovated. You know, eventually and get some of the money, but not really. It's still a they little disproportionate. They but they don't do that in America. Yeah, like that is gonna be like locally that that was that vote took place and it passed on the tax so you know people who get involved in that type of stuff for whatever reason if it's political or if it's just for the kids which is what it should be um that plays a bigger role in what you do but 
the president, man, people put all this weight into what the president is, who is going to be the president and which party is it going to be. And they lose sight completely of the American people and what's best for all of us instead of my party won. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, your party's stupid. Or the, you know what I'm saying? Like, get, I don't want to hit it. I don't care. Like, if you won and your party not helping everybody, then you lost. We all lose. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? We all lose if they put some scrub in there. And I don't think we got nothing better than a scrub to vote for right now. And and I, and I think that I think that's why the vice the vice presidential debate for me is is very intriguing because I actually I think Mike Pence is a sharp dude and I think he's he has more of the president look and feel to him. You know, I think Trump did good getting Pence. I guess. Like I see him and I see him and I hear him talk and I'm like he kind of seems more like the president in terms I mean, of I agree. He like laid back. He seems more presidential. Trump is the most is the there least you go. presidential. You, said it. You, said you know it. what I'm saying? Like Teddy Roosevelt. I don't. I, I wasn't alive for Teddy Roosevelt to see how he you know act. But this dude was like you know going hunting and killing elephants and walk lightly, carry a big stick and rough riders and all this kind of you know like what I've read about him is that he was kind of a loose cannon. This dude went and put his face on the freaking Mount Rushmore. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? He he did that and put his face on there like he was one of the greatest. And he ain't his 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 <laughs> nephew. His nephew is much better than him. But anyway, he hadn't been president yet, so he couldn't have been on there. What I'm saying is, you look at all the other presidents, even George W. Bush, which which seemed like the most goofy dude to be president of all time, but he at least was like kind of relaxed and chill. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? It wasn't very unprofessional and just impolite. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's that's what you don't get that from Trump. You just get like just a guy who's rough around the edges and, and yeah, he's and, and, and not and, he's not a nice guy. Just period. Well, he's just I don't I don't know if he's not a nice guy, but like he's Based a business he's a business tycoon. You know what I mean? Think about it. Like I've uh, I used to watch uh, his show, the The Apprentice. You I watched, watched that, a few that times. on purpose, like a few times, you know, <laughs> back in the day, and 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 he seemed very, you know, for the cameras, so to speak. But mm -hmm. um, and then they did a roast on people don't realize they did a roast on Donald Trump. Oh, I need to go watch that again. I remember, so, I remember like catching a piece of it. So but that see. that was when I first like if when I saw The Apprentice, I'm like, man, this dude's kind of all I know about him is this business tycoon, billionaire, you know. Uh, blah, and, blah, blah. Rappers but, talk about him all the time, too. That's why. Right. I want but then but then I saw the roast and I'm like, OK, this guy, he's maybe he's a little down to earth. You know what I mean? Because he did that, you know, for whatever reason. I don't know if it, the proceeds went to charity. I don't know. Not like he needed the money. But um, anyway, so I just I know that he's his personality is not that what people want i guess but in the end i don't care who's president their personality doesn't matter to me think you know? about it like this though trey and first of all he he get more credit than he deserves for his business savvy for one secondly the president is the most visible man on the planet all right if mm -hmm. you are right your son josh seeing him as the president as being picked and selected as the most, you know, the biggest popularity contest of all time. You want that guy to be a role model for all Americans, especially the young ones. Right. He ain't it, dog. I don't want my kids acting like that. You know what I'm saying? That's a bad look for the whole country for him to be that unpresidential. And this ain't this ain't no political talk. This is just, you know, like on, on some, on some, you know. We teachers, bro. We coaches. So we got to we got to carry ourselves a certain way. We got to represent, you know, certain things of character and integrity so we can because we role models for these young kids. Right. We can't be walking around acting like that, talking like that at school, on our job, anywhere. You know what I'm saying? So I don't, I don't respect him on that level. That ain't, and that ain't got nothing to do with politics. It's just like, how you going to carry yourself? And that's what that's what Obama had over a lot of presidents. Is because he was just a smooth dude. 
and he would make you forget about the politics. I don't know if that's that might not even be good either, but he going he going to draw you in with his character and charisma. And, and he, that, he was a rock star. Yeah, so like and but you could, your kids could look at him and say, "You know what? I could at least carry myself in that manner." And mm-hmm. And, and as a as a as a father, you could tell your son like, "Hey, that's a guy who you could model yourself after." I, I get the, it. At least the way he interact with people, social his social skills, or well, something that you could learn from. I get it, but also, like, I don't think it's as important as people make it out to be because we've had Republican and Democratic presidents that have gone both ways with with their perception to the public. I just feel like right. Trump, Trump is a, he just seems like he, you know, he, he's, he may be a little, you know, um, uh, cool. he may be a little, you know, kind of unprofessional. Like a, a jerk. Let's, let's, no, like, like, Sorry, look I'm at just, me, I'm like, look at me, like, you know, he, he likes to be the center of attention. You know what I mean? Lame. He likes to be the center of attention. He just likes to focus on him, but corny, you know, Maybe so, but <laughs> listen, we we've had it's not president, political. We've had presidents that have have been much worse examples for kids, and and fathers and husbands, who who's you know done much worse. You know, what Bill I mean? Clinton. Bill Clinton, you know, and the fact you know, and what he did with the affair. Look, and look at John F. Kennedy. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just naming a few. I, I feel and, you. And, and both of them were very, Hey, you know, they had right. the swag, they had well, the swag, but they did, they did. They, they were very, you know, Bill Clinton playing the saxophone and, you know, they were very smooth and, and all oh, the kiss babies, you know, uh, it was just like, but they, Trump, they were cool. Trump, Trump were does cool. that Trump, Trump does have his moments when he, you know, in his P in, in, in his area with his people and his supporters where he kissing babies and you know laughing and shaking hands and like being a normal person and but we don't we don't know, know him as that look I, and you're right and i think i think seeing him on the apprentice with the you're fired we we got that in our head but mm-hmm. uh i think the the one time i'll be honest i saw him i saw his reaction when he got the news about uh about ruth uh ginsburg Oh yeah, yeah. We're getting yeah, on the plane was, or something. Yeah, he seemed he seemed like legit a human being who was, you know, you know, a little saddened by the news that he got. I mean, had they I, known each other I, for I, had they I known each other previously or something? Did they have like a previous? I'm sure. Yeah, I'm like, sure they knew each other. Man. I don't know. Like, I don't know. I don't know the relationship became, before he became I president. So. I, I, I would. I would. I don't know, but I would probably say no. But mm-hmm. I think that uh, I don't think that he would fake it. I think he really is a straight shooter. Now he might not be. You might not agree with him, and he might not. Is he that might be good? 100% is, wrong. Yeah, I mean, is, and I, some, <laughs> I sometimes wonder if that's like you know, especially dealing with certain problems that the United States has to deal with. Do we want someone who's a president who's not afraid to stand up and be a bully? And because he bullied, he bullied the first part of that. No like, question. And I, I didn't like that how he was. Bro. I didn't. I didn't listen. I didn't like how he was talking over the moderator and Biden. He bullied it. I mean, he at first he was very, he was very over. Trey, listen, you know, doing it. You listen know what I mean? to listen to what you just said. Bullying is bullying not one of the hottest topics or most important things that we discuss in schools nowadays to try to get kids to stop doing it. But well, yeah, maybe, maybe I should. Just, Maybe no, I shouldn't have said bully. No, he was, he was right. talking no, over. No, you're one hundred percent correct. He was That's like talking was over, doing. like talking he over. He was bullying the moderator. He wasn't. He didn't really bully Biden because Biden didn't let him. But he definitely was. The moderator was like, "Hey, I need you to stop talking." He just kept going like one hundred percent disrespectful. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So that's that's who he is. He can't help himself sometimes, bro. Yeah, that's, and that's, maybe they need I'm to. I'm just going off my observation, but the moderator right. got to step his game up, and he should have set the tone from the beginning. And you know, just that's what a that's what a bully do. They see how far they can go with you, and then they keep picking on you. And if you don't stop them, then they gonna keep doing it because that's what that's their mo. That's what bullies do. And Trump probably been a big dude his whole life, and, and had money and could do and say what he want, do what he want. And let's not act like he ain't got no infidelity issues, just like Clinton and uh. And JFK and Robert F. Kennedy, who never became president, but they was they the brothers had Marilyn Monroe going back and forth. 
that's another that's that's a history lesson for another time. But speaking uh, of speaking of Marilyn Monroe, uh, we do a, we do a we do a project in drug ed where we have to pick a famous person from time whose life was like negatively affected from alcohol, tobacco, or drugs. Valor, Amy, Amy Winehouse. <laughs> so I had, I had somebody do Amy Winehouse, but uh, I had a young I had a young lady that did Marilyn Monroe. Word. She didn't she didn't know any she didn't even know who Marilyn Monroe was. Black black student, black student, black student, teenage girl. She had uh, no idea. She didn't even. She was like uh, that. She also she didn't court like she had no idea Marilyn Monroe. Jet, she had no idea. Like, right. and so it was cool. Anyway, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but Marilyn Monroe, you're most good. kids are like- I wanna, I wanna say that a lot of like, for it was, she was, Marilyn Monroe was like hot in, in, in black culture for a little while. Like everybody was wearing the t-shirts and like, I'm I'm Marilyn Monroe. They don't even know the history behind that, but I, I it's like, she was hot for a little second, bro. <laughs> and, that's, and that's funny. But um, look, time, time, time gets getting a little late, man. And, you know, we could talk about the debate a lot, honestly, because yeah, it's we, lot, we, we, but it's one is it's one more topic, bro. Okay. The white supremacist question. We gotta talk about that because I don't I, he was when, when when Trump got the question, he was like, What do you want to what you want me to say? Yeah, I'll I'll talk to I I'll heard say, yeah, and I heard him say he was sure, like, sure. I'll I say, yeah, I, I'll I'll sure. I'll tell them the you know what I'm saying. He now he know that that's who votes for him. He knows that. He not gonna like totally he know that he don't want to lose the votes because that's what politicians do. They but are there really lose. that many white supremacists that their vote matters though? Are, he lost the popular vote, Trey. He lost the popular vote last year, last time to Hillary. I'm just he gotta get every vote. Hillary, Hillary, <laughs> Hillary. I always, I always think of Fresh, Fresh Prince of Bel Air whenever I hear somebody Hillary, say Hillary. Hillary, Ruff. <laughs> Hillary, Ruff. <laughs> no. But I was mad. I went, okay, let's get back to it. Cause that's, okay. that's one of my favorite episodes. That's the, man, I cry laughing when I see that. Hillary. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, all right, let's stop. <laughs> so Joe Biden, Joe Biden like helped him out though. And he was like, yeah, call them proud boys. Why he said that? He I've never was heard so, of that. He, me neither. I, mean, I, had to, I had to look up that group. Look, me too. And my cousin, uh, shout out to Kevin. He, he like was telling us about it and Noah was putting us on it too. But I had never, I didn't understand what that meant. I'm like, proud boys. So they like proud to be white supremacists. What, what's, what's the deal behind that? And uh, y'all could go do your, I want y'all to go do y'all own homework on that. But I think Biden missed out on a good opportunity to really, like he was on the spot. This was like the big moment that it, and for him to have to like either like drag his feet or denounce it. And Biden gave him an out to say proud boys and he took that and ran with it. So he didn't. He didn't denounce it. He still dragged his feet and left left that door open for conversation, you know. And um, I just think that he's not gonna denounce it because because it's it's the votes first. But it's hard to say that he ain't one of them when he don't do that. You know what I'm saying? Like white supremacists. It ain't it ain't about like strictly white supremacists. It's like these dudes. How do I want to how do I want to say this? I'm trying to figure out how I want to make this point because just to just to be straightforward, bro. Like it's the the most racist people in the country want to vote for Donald Trump. They think that he's a better option. The racists do, and. I don't, I don't know. know. There's there's racist on both sides, dude. There's racist I, I, on both sides. That's what I was about to say. That's why I was about to say, like it it ain't. It, there there's Hispanic. I'm not gonna just say that Joe the, Biden. Yeah. Is okay, like, let me let me let me say this, and maybe it'll come to you. Let me say this because maybe. he was like, if you ain't vote for me, you ain't black. So I, I don't, well, let me he, let me say this, and maybe it'll come draw, to you. I, I'm I'm past that. With him so too. um, okay, so it seemed like when he asked him the question, it was it was very odd in which he said it you know, about denouncing, it almost seemed like it was in relation to, he said, do you, would you be willing to denounce white supremacists? As if it's some sort of a group that has a name and an organization and a union and a, me and a members, and it's written on NBA basketball courts. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like, I don't know if there's a white supremacist movement 
it seems to be like the white supremacists and and the the real racists are the ones who are in the, still in the shadows. You know what I mean? It's the same reason that we I'm talked about the, the 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 people that in the Ku Klux Klan. They that's why they, that's why they walk around with hoods on. They don't want nobody to know who they are. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's like, I and 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 Donald Trump immediately started talking about. Um, the problem with the extreme leftists are the ones with the riots and this and that. Yeah, so he deflected. You know what I mean? He, he deflected. And I don't know if the, the, maybe previously they were talking about if what, what problem white supremacists were causing, I guess, in terms of being like hidden secret racist. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I, I'm not defending white supremacy. I'm just saying, is there a group that I don't know about that's out there? Because I looked at the Proud Boys and they're not, they're not like you know white supremacy. But is there a I mean, group out there, right. Reed, that's that's called the, that's, that's still like you got the Ku Klux Klan, but but, you got the but, Aryan but you don't see them no more. You don't see them no more, really. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Right. Mostly, like in terms of the, that's, in that, terms doesn't, of, that doesn't mean that they don't exist. That doesn't mean like obviously if I'm a not saying the clan members are intelligent at all. I wouldn't give them that much credit. But if I was an intelligent clans member that wanted to continue my life, you know, in society and, and uh, as a part of it, I can't wear the sheets no more. You know what I'm saying? And everything that I do got to be in secret. But these, and, and I think that there is a lot of that going on that they like just hiding out and, until, until they feel like Trump makes them a little bit more comfortable makes white makes racism a little bit more popular and okay because they got if some of them feel like they got him to uh to back him up but i i agree that there's like it's not a very visible uh white supremacist group or like something that's tangible that you could really truly put your hands on because some people are out with it and some people like are closeted very much so and some of them are liberals. You know what I'm saying? Like they, all the conservatives ain't racist and all the liberals ain't not racist either. So well, that's the thing. And we're, and we're even saying someone's a liberal and it's like. Liberal, I'll, I know. I'll never just, like. Just use that know, because that's what I know, I'm say. just saying like, but again, that's what like, they were debating about that last night. Both Biden and Trump were saying like, um, far right, far left, Democrats, right. Republicans, they were they were throwing around names that were going extremist. And see, but it's like I don't belong to don't label me anything <laughs> but but Trey. Straight up. I am a teacher and a coach. Don't label me anything but Trey. I'm not if someone asks me if I'm Republican or Democrat, I'm gonna go, what? <laughs> oh, oh, do or then, then then the next question is: Do you vote Republican or Democrat, or do you vote Independent? Whatever. I was like, I mean, I vote for who I think should be president, but I didn't I didn't vote in the last election four years ago because they didn't really. You didn't think either one of them should be president. They they didn't reach me in that way. You know what I mean? Yeah. So well, see, it's just one of those things. And, and some people are gonna judge you because you didn't vote for, you know, you didn't vote against Trump. Like some people truly got their heart set on, you know, you gotta vote against Trump because he's bad. And I ain't saying that he ain't like bad, but <laughs> like why you seen you, you I'm sure you seen the South Park episode with the giant douche and the turd sandwich. Now that is some inappropriate stuff. I don't mean no disrespect to nobody, but uh, that's an episode that is satirical um, that I think is, you know, that speaks to where we are today and where we pretty much be every four years, honestly, man. And I just, not because he was black, but Obama was just, I had to vote for him, bro. I just had to. But again, I think- Partially because he was black though. I ain't gonna act like that wasn't part of it. But I, I just know, like but, the guy. He just seemed but cool. I, and that's what I'm saying, Reed. You, you, I think you said it perfectly a few minutes ago. It's a popularity contest, especially for the young people. I feel like even, even people our age, you know, there's not many people that I know my age and younger who are intellectually 
just on top of every policy that Biden and Trump is standing for and right, support. Right, right. I almost wish that they would make a ballot that said Trump, Biden, and whoever, the libertarian. Uh, jo- I've been seeing a lot of stuff about Joe George Jensen. It's, you know, they got a party. The, the Green Party but, is another one. They got a bunch but of But I'm just saying, if, if they have their names at the top, and then there's, let's just say a hundred, I mean, why not, right? We freaking mm-hmm. take, we make our kids take a hundred question tests for, for the ACT. Let's give a hundred topics or questions regarding a hundred of the most important American thought out problems and issues. Yeah. And by every single one of those, it either said for, against, or blah, blah, blah. I had some kind of description of their stance Something. on it. So you actually that's what, this, that's what the this, debate's supposed to be. This but this voting wouldn't just be, oh, I like Trump or I like Biden or I don't like Trump or I don't like Biden. It would be an intellectual decision. And if they didn't uphold to what we saw, then we could hold them accountable. We could hold them accountable. Right. There needs to be something to say, this is your stance on it. Don't go, don't in three months be like i changed my mind yeah because do that. that happens you know i don't care whether you're republican democrat whatever presidents change their minds votes. after their like votes so that's votes. all i'm saying is that i wish that they could devise it in a in a in a way where we could almost take a test on our presidents before we decided who we wanted to vote for because so many of the people that are voting in November read have no freaking clue <laughs> about anything that these presidents really stand for. Yep. Seriously. Seriously. It has become a racial battle. It has become an issue that people vote for because, you know, right, left, because, right, left, left, right. But because of a name and not a person. But the thing about it is <sighs> that with all of that, because I 100% agree, Trump is like the worst. <laughs> so he makes people no, not like him. Don't do that. Don't he go there. Make, no, I'm not talking about it has nothing to do with politics, bro. Oh, you're saying in terms of if, if it, yeah, like, like, he's not even trying to be popular. Uh-uh. Like, he lame and corny and he's an asshole. And but but that Joe's is, a, Joe's a big softy. You really want Joe going to talk to to Putin and Russia? That's right, right. Listen, listen, Trey. Right. Listen. That's what they always say about the Democrats. They like, oh, they soft. They not gonna be able to manage. No, no, no. Them. I'm just talking about. No, I said Joe. Joe Budden. Joe Biden. I know, but they always no, say no, no. it. And Joe Budden. Oh, Joe Budden. Oh, <laughs> you talking about Joe Budden for real? Uh, but seriously, it's just like <laughs> no. Nah, but see, they they so but the, but the Republicans are supposed to be the tough guys, and uh, mm. the the Repo- the Democrats are softies. You're stereotyping, Reed. I know, but that's what I'm getting the stereotypes from other people. <laughs> like that's 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 like what the right says about the left, and that's what the the right says about the right. Also, like oh, we're we're strong. We're not gonna take crap from anyone. And, <laughs> Those soft liberal liberals, man, I'm telling you, those liberals just, God, man, liberals, right? just, they're just liberating all the time and liberaling. Isn't it funny how people people join and and label themselves as a part of a party or a group? And don't even know nothing about it. And really have no freaking <laughs> clue. Like right? what, 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 you know, what really entitles that? It's, that'd be like a... Like a dude, like being like, yeah, I want to be, I want to be in a gang, and then they're like, okay, and then and then five minutes later, he's getting the kicked out of. He's like, what happened? I didn't know this was part of it, you know. Where he's got to go rob someone, like I didn't sign up for this or whatever. I'm just, I'm using an example, like I know, I know, bro. It's it's stupid. You know what I mean? It's stupid. It is. I just, I just, and and listen, um, that's why sometimes I feel like older people who have who have seen, like, I feel like our parents who have seen so many elections, I, you know, I wonder if they know exactly all the ramifications of what one president, like the stuff that really matters. You know what I right. mean? Mm-hmm. Not if a dude's a butthead or if one dude's slow. 
or if one guy's really old, one guy's dementia, one guy is a you know an a hole or orange or whatever people call he's him. He's orange. Like, he's really I'm orange like, though. <laughs> I wonder. I wonder how many people like either vote for Biden or Trump, not even realizing that maybe their policies are bad for them. You know what I'm saying? And that's why I voting, wish we could voting have, against your own have, best interests. I wish we could have that hundred hundred question test to see what each president how they let's, really, let's make maybe it. is there is there something out there? Am I am I wrong? Is there something out there like that? Already? All right, look, no, I'm, I'm they they might they might they probably got us. We could we we got to do we got to do some research and see. But like let's let's look at some topics. We got like law and order, drugs, you know, crime and all that. Uh, you got gay marriage, definitely drugs, you got abortion. You got uh, it got the economy. You got the environment. You got healthcare. You got education. You got military and defense and foreign policy. Uh, that's ten that I think I just named. I might that not that might not be ten. It's close to it. So you know those are like the main ones um, that you usually hear about. But you, you forget you forgot you forgot taxes. I forgot taxes. The, Instead the economy. So you could like. So the economy has like an umbrella. The education the IRS, has, the has the IRS. like an umbrella. Okay. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. I, I, so like yeah, all I mean, of, it, it all ties into each other. But if you want to get like specific to the detail line by line, then you could you could easily create a list of a hundred topics and issues that uh that people would deal with. Well, look, we'll um we need to reconvene either after the vice presidential debate or the next. Oh, debate. every one of them. Oh, we gonna we okay. gonna talk about all these debates with everybody. So. Yes, y'all make sure that y'all turn back and listen. Hopefully, they can change it. I would love to say, listen, that they should have had Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan would have. No, Joe Rogan. this is who they need. They need Tony Reale with his He's points good. to get with the points. points. Yes, they need points. You know what I'm saying? And they need the mute mm -hmm. button and you get minus points for mute. And if you make a good point, you get plus. And if whoever gets it at the end wins and get to act. And like, they get the two minutes. They get two minutes to, to, to shut it down. Damn, Reed. Around the horn. But seriously, though, it's got to be more. I, I want to be like, Malcolm, what is your plan and how do you feel about education reform in every american state and i don't want i don't know two minutes you can't say shit in two minutes <laughs> listen man nothing i want you to say what's on your heart and i'm Speaking gonna let biden heart. i'm gonna let biden respond and then trump you will get to counter respond yeah boom and then Let's biden see. next thing for biden hey mm -hmm. i'm coming at you with with um what do you want healthcare. taxes health care Mm -hmm. Obamacare. On, they still call it Obamacare. On, speak what's on your heart, Biden. Trump, you can rebuttal. Biden, you can refute his rebuttal. That's it. it this this two minutes stuff. What Nicks. are we doing? This, you know what I mean? This you know they're gonna have so they, so they're gonna have a town hall when probably at least one of the, the next two is gonna be a town hall. So uh, stu people will get to ask some questions and we'll get to watch them stumble all over themselves during during that. Um, but should uh, we? Go Okay. I think you know a debate is when you do when you're on a debate team, one team wins and one team loses. But you gotta keep score. There are judges that keep score. So what mm. they also need to add, like Tony Reale, you know, has points, a point system that keeps score and it has an actual winner at the end. Nobody can win if there's no score, no judge, nothing like that. So that's another thing. So you can say, like, hey, he actually won the debate. You know what I'm saying? And if you got a winner. That makes people say, oh, well, since he did win, maybe <laughs> hey. I'll swing that way. You know what I'm saying? That, Rose, they ought to have hey. you know how people jump on the bandwagons. Lakers up by 17 and a half. Oh, you know? they came back. Hey, Reed, speaking. Mm. <laughs> hey, they mm. should do a presidential debate, best of seven series. Best of seven. And, At least and five. Look, so it'll be presidents, vice presidents, presidents, vice presidents. And you know to be like, oh, and they can vice even president do it. They can even the do it. win. Yeah, they could do it at like their hometown too, so you can get like home field advantage. Mm, like, like big stadium packed. Big stadium. I'm talking about every time, do it in every the, time, do it in Vegas. In every time, every time Trump and Trump says something, everyone's like, yeah. 
and then Biden's there and people are booing. But hey, now we're going to switch it back to Biden's home stadium. He's going to feel that energy. You know what I mean? He might be dancing around the stage and stuff. Let's hey. go. Get some, get a DJ in there. Read man, Trump we, 2028. Man, we got this on lock. Man, I had a wait, wait. Day. I just said read Trump 2028. My fault. No, I am with him like that. You know that. Read man. butts 2028. They're gonna have you getting mixed up with Trump, boy. You better you and know, why the know. why the <laughs> do we have presidential candidates that can't even debate? Because because we as a people have failed ourselves. That's ridiculous. <laughs> we as a people have failed ourselves bro if we could come up with things like muddy buddies cookies and cream we ought to be able to do better <laughs> than to have a presidential election <laughs> where three people are on the ballot and it don't mean shit but taking votes from somebody else go in there to vote go in there to vote trey i ain't telling you who to vote for just go in there to vote you're gonna see like 25 people on the ballot it's gonna be like 20 20 something people who you never heard of and then these other two that you know all about but you well, don't even like. My wife registered me to vote. I am registered to vote. So that's what's up, man. I'm registered. You got to be registered so you can vote in your local elections, most importantly. But go, but I just want you I just want you to go in the booth, bro. I just want you to go see all these people who going to be on the ballot that you ain't going to never you never going to hear a thing about them. They're going to have like 137 votes. You know what I'm saying? And you might make it 138. Or, or 137,000 votes. Maybe. they still like going to lose. Nation, like nationwide. they still mm-hmm. going to lose. So they ain't got what, a chance. So which party paid them a million dollars to run for president? Ask Kanye where he got his money from. They got a paper trail somewhere. We got to find it. Vote think, easy. Uh, Vote for you, easy. Big Sean had a verse about Kanye for president. You know what I'm talking about. I'm, I'm, how much worse can he do? I don't know. Um, he, a Repub- he a Republican, right? So he's going to be tough on crime. He's anti-abortion. He's uh, pro-gun laws. That's another one we didn't talk about, the Second Amendment. Uh, so, yeah. So since, since Kanye is a Republican, obviously he must be for all the conservative ideals, right? So he would be a valid candidate, right? Um, just, just because, just because he he has the label. Well, listen, we said we weren't gonna be in here for a long time, and it's man, like, we don't. We uh, we suck at that. And uh, I just enjoy talking to you. It's fun. <laughs> yeah, I Thank enjoy you. talking to everybody else too. Thank you to the the we had I don't know the crew that was on and off here. Yeah, we had a few people, people come through and holler at us, man. People always go back and watch. It seems like. Um, so at least we're talking about something good enough where people go back and watch. But, you know, share it on your page, man. Yeah, it's already done. So we can get some love. All right, I'm up. You no, share I'm it on your people. page. I'm, too, ta- I'm talking to the people. Oh, watching. yeah, y'all, y'all, yeah, yeah. Y'all need to start sharing our stuff. All right, listen. We'll, we'll pay you. I need to go spend some time with my wife. I've been Me too. working all day, so. Me too. <laughs> Man, I want to say that. Let me give a shout out to Carissa, man. I came home and dinner was cooked. Ooh, My wife, Nikki, so made, me some, made me some, t- I had tacos, homemade tacos Ooh, with, tacos with lettuce, to tomato. Wait. Was that on Tuesday? No, but we, she knows my favorites are the Doritos shells. You know what I'm talking about? The Doritos cheesy shells. I ate four and then she bought me Muddy Buddy. So <laughs> you snacking, anyway, snacking. Yeah. And, all right. And the, and the butts are coming to Baton Rouge October 31st. So we may go live from Baton Rouge. Oh, we do most definitely will. Okay. Okay. Straight out of straight out of Gonzales, probably. All right. Um, I'll talk to you soon. Good sir. All right, bro. Peace. Peace. Chestnut Checker signing out. Thank y'all for coming rock with us again. Hopefully, Trump and uh your boy Biden will give us some more good stuff to talk about. Go Lakers.